Freerun give me strength? Okay, so. Mute. Zeos Pantera. Host of Z Reviews, Inner Fetish, and all the other channels linked in my link tree. Don't forget to check out my collab link tree down there also, um, which is basically my merch. Just sell my collabs is my merch. Anyway, Freerun collects tricks and, and spells. And the Topping DX9, which is one of the prettiest things I've ever seen. In fact, I saw it at uh, UK Can Gem first or Munich, f Munich first. And I was like, ah, what the hell is that with the dual screens and the lit glass? Not plastic, glass. I took a knife and tried to glass window with the with the nice amber LEDs and then the VU meters that you could change the style of. And the, oh my god, this is a topping remote, but metal? Like real, like metal? Okay. One gemstone in the title, thirteen hundred dollars. We're gonna start with that, and then we gotta discuss like the madness because I decided to plug in everything except for the triggers because I literally don't have any three point five millimeter mono wires lying around because I use them all for my home theater. Um, but I plugged in everything so you can kind of grasp what's going on here. A lot to simplify this so you don't get too overwhelmed it is simply just a combo headphone amp DAC that's it comes with a remote control to topping very basic but if we expand on that it's their flagship it looks like a flagship it smells like a flagship it tastes like a flagship and it has some interesting quirks which I wasn't expecting and actually had to have a friend point it out to me because I literally got it, unboxed it, put it in the pile and I'm like, wow, I think so pretty, pulled it out of the pile and I still didn't notice like some of the things that this thing's got going on. So tour of the unit, I, I check out the, the, the things in the timeline to jump in case I, ha in case I can coherently make a review ever, there'll be, you know, chapters. Uh, Patreon and subscribe star, please support this channel. Anyway, so the unit is uh, wide, wider than uh, any other topping unit, I'm pretty sure. It's not like rack mount wide. We're not talking about 19 inch, a giggity. Um, but it is certainly going to be the only thing on your desk if you're a normal person. I've had it on top of other things. The bottom, I guess we should flip the bottom. I just love the silver screws. Also, this comes in black or silver. I would probably recommend the silver, honestly. I'm a huge fan of that. This kind of has that cool Darth Vader glowing orange sort of thing going for it. But imagine that with silver all around it. Um, or I would take a, a paint pen and fill in the topping. This is a 15th anniversary. Where were you 15 years ago? Because I can't remember. Um, it's a 15th anniversary edition of, th of a thing. And they decided to go absolutely fucking nuts. So the windows on top, I'd like the internet to thank me personally for that. Quest Style years ago, when I was back in the old apartment, sent me a demo model that had an Alexan top. And I reviewed it. And then I was like, everyone loves this. You need to make a Lexan top. Now, Quest Style literally has their dongle dax and shit are see-through on top. And topping sort of just the ev the um, evolution of that has come all the way to here. You are welcome, Internet. Um, on the glass is etched literally what you're seeing underneath it. So, like, it's saying isolated switching power supply modules. And you could see them there. There's the Bluetooth module there. The uh, Exmos XU316, the AK411 Spitif receiver. Like, it's, it's going through the entire layout of how this thing works, which is fucking cool. Um, this entire bank of lots of little things is the six channel high performance discrete NFCA modules with an NFCA logo. You get your hybrid relay volume control because we turn the knob. You hear clicking because it's fucking around with relays and different, uh, it's basically a, a resistor ladder hybrid. So it's doing like a little bit, but then it's clicking over and doing it a time, clicking over and doing that. So it's very, very good digital volume. Here's your AK4499 DAC, which is the top of the line AKM DAC sitting right there. Your low noise drivers, your high performance IV converter, which is all that. Blah, 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 DC surge protection, blah, blah, blah. That's the top. 
This is one of those units that sucks because you can't just put things on top of it. I did... I don't know if you were at my New Year's Eve party. Congratulations, you're one of the select few. If you weren't here, I may have tweeted one picture of it. I actually had the Mass Kobo 465 on top of this. That's the only thing that qualifies to cover that window. I had it on my desk upstairs, and I just you could actually still see the footprints on it. I just placed that $17,000 headphone amp on top of this because I was using this as the DAC. We'll get to it. Um... So top's beautiful. The edges are rounded. So, I mean, that's a that's a love or hate thing. I'm very happy it's not a square box. It gives it that little bit of like, ooh. And that actually comes from the when they first started changing the style like a year and a half ago to making the edges round. But now this is like the biggest boy of the round. So top's covered. Do you want to go back or front first? Let's go to the back. Tell Fern where we're going. Uh, where do you want to start? All right. Here we go. Power switch. On, off. Very simple. It's in the back. That's the master on, off. You can still soft off with either the remote or with the button in front. Um, you have a monoprice power cable. This is great. These are made for hospitals. That's why they're see-through. You get your 12-volt trigger in and out. So now 12-volt trigger is a 3.5 millimeter mono or stereo. Sometimes you need to use a stereo cable that if you plug it into this, the out of this means when you turn this on, it sends out 12 volt to another device that would be like a power amp and goes, okay, now I'm on. And when you turn this off, it goes, okay, now I'm off the other thing. So that's nice to have. I have plugged in literally every digital input. This is a DAC amp combo. It only has digital input inputs. It's not a streamer. This is not for Wi-Fi. This is simply Bluetooth, this antenna. But we have AES. We have not one, but two coaxial digitals. Not one, but two fiber optics. We have one II2S. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six digital inputs plus Bluetooth, plus USB. And I just want to point out, I bought a really nice USB cable, like look at this thing. This thing is sweet. It's even got a weird slidey brass thing. I'll link to this. This is the same company that makes those crazy nice $35 power cords I've been using. I just looked them up and I'm like, holy shit. It's like a $35 USB cable, but it's real nice. Whatever, I'll use it at some point. So now, okay, inputs on a DAC, it's got more than normal. It's got double coaxials, it's got double fiber optics. One AES, which is nice in case you want to use a coaxial digital for a very long distance, and II2S, which is the preferred highest end. I would always use II2S if it's available. A lot of people don't have that option. I'm using a Singer SU6, which is also from APOS. By the way, APOS sent this, which is also from APOS that's giving me this. So I'm, it's allowing me to use this higher end connector, which is just a US, an HDMI cable, by the way. Um, but it basically takes some of the work off the DAC because it's doing it weirdly. I don't know. The real good shit, the stuff that's like, oh, my friend had to point this out to me because I didn't realize it, is it has two XLRs here, two XLRs here, and four RCAs. And normally, when you see this configuration of two, 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 and two, it's two ins and two outs and two ins and two outs for like a headphone amplifier. But this doesn't have an analog input. Instead, what this has is nothing but outputs. Just it, to the point where I was gonna, usually when I'm demoing something like this, I'll have something that every output goes to. Fuck you. I don't have the desk space. Even if I use the racks, the wiring would be fucking bizarre. So these are literally going to nothing. Look at the nothing they're going to. They're just here to represent things. You get one side of it is labeled. Let me see which side it is. Okay. This side, the outside, is labeled pre-out. And this side, the inside, are labeled out. Line out. Now, the difference between pre out and line out is pre out is volume controllable and line out is permanently outputting, like just maximum volume all the time. There's a weird thing in the menu where you can actually choose whether the DAC is a pre or a DAC, and I don't think that affects it the way I would think it would affect it, but we'll get to that. We'll get to the menu. There's a couple more steps in the menu than a normal topping. So, but the point of this unit, if you're blowing $1,300 in this unit, you can have, without any fucking issue, 
four entire other units, whether it's an amp, a tube amp, a set of speakers, a set of studio monitors. I've got the Ayayama AO7 Max wired up to one of these two so that I can control the volume, which I have to switch. Hold on. Oh, I gotta hit the button. This is a whole thing. That's headphone. I hit the button again. Oh God, this is what I was dreading with this review. Cause it's like, there's so many buttons and switches and knobs. So how do I get it to play the speakers? I want speakers to play. It's playing the Koss KPH 40s with Dakoni. I was gonna also have like a series of headphones on the table. Usually I have a bunch to show off to say, hey, look, I tried this. Trust me, it's been here for like three months. I've tried it on everything and it doesn't run tungsten 100%. So if you're wondering about that, you can get 90% of tungsten out of it. Even though it has 10 watts of channel, I'm gonna get to the headphone amp section. I'm getting to it, all right? Let me, let me, please, let me get to it. So what that means is you can run just four entire with no issue other things off of this DAC. The only thing that comes close to that is to Gishelli Labs Day Z, which has been, I had the promo board, no one watched that video. Apparently you're not interested in a distribution DAC. And then they put it in a beautiful box with all the wood carving on it called the Day Z and had a screen and everyone's fucking losing their mind about this new thing called a distribution DAC, which Gishelli Labs, I'll link to them, they have that. I don't know if that's for sale yet, but I'll be getting one because it's the unit that sits back there, which you can't see, which has, I think, four RCA outputs and then two sets of XLRs. So literally this is almost competing with that. And there's also a headphone amplifier. Plus just, it just can feed fucking everything. Everything. By the way, all this is world's best. I'll just link to world's best cables. They have the most cables on Amazon, in case you didn't know. So yeah, this is a f fucking just so much stuff. Moving on to the front. You obviously don't need to hook all this up, but if you're spending this sort of money and you're this sort of crazy, go for it. The front is a power select button, a left screen, a knob with push, a right screen, a quarter inch, a 4.4, and a four pin XLR. That's actually pretty reasonable. Now, if we hold this, click, turns off, lights turn off, everyone goes to sleep, free run takes a nap, doesn't wake up, it's fine. Hold it to turn it on, topping, DX9, two different screens. So now I'm gonna rub my eyes, which you can't see me doing. It's like, all right. Two screens that show the same information, but all different. So you get, right now they're currently on a VU. If you don't know what a VU is, if I put back on Dirty Vegas, oh, Dirty Honkers intro, you can see I have the modern VU meters, which are the blue ones, bouncing up and down and showing you what's playing, left and right channel, which is really nice. This says headphone out all, because you can, I've done this on a couple other topping devices, so I'm just going to explain it to you real quick before I get into the menu, and then it's kind of awkward. One of the other things about this unit that makes it fucking spectacular is it doesn't just give you all these outputs, including the front. You get individualized control to turn every single one of them on and or off, and there's memory functions for the volume on them in clusters. Fuck, like the front headphone outputs, if you have, you could leave three headphones plugged into this and just with the remote, because you have the headphone button here, just say, I want the one plugged into the quarter inch turned on now. And it'll come on and it'll remember the volume for that. Or the one for the 4.4, the beautiful Koss with the balance cable, which you can get this one from Amazon or you can get a balance cable from Heart Audio Cables, who sponsors a lot of my shows. So please check out Heart Audio Cables and link in the description. But you could have this just plugged in and leave it there. You could have a 4.4 pin and you could just go headphone output off, 6.35, 4.4, XLR, all, which is another entirely separate volume setting. So let's see if we set that to 36 and a half dB. All is 36 and a half. But let me just cycle through. Off is obviously off, 6.35. 33, 
4.4. Was it not doing that? Wait, I might be wrong. 35, 33.5. I lied to you. I didn't lie to you. I just thought that did that. What I'm thinking of, okay, so the headphones are all locked into one volume. It's the outputs in the back that can be separate from the front output volumes. Shouldn't be wearing a long sleeve shirt down here. It's hot. Um, so, okay. Either way, you can still switch between all the different headphone outputs. There is a high-low gain we can get to, but uh, we're still displaying what we're going on. So, headphones are now set to off. There's our volume in very, very... For one thing, like, when you adjust the volume, it, it doesn't do it either. I wish, I wish, like a giant blue fish, that there was something bigger than a 10-point font telling me the volume. But when you have the VUs on, that's it. You have the VUs. You doesn't want to interrupt that. You can set it. If we go in here, go to display. Home can be VU. FFT, which looks like that. Normal, which shows 44.1 AES PCM with slow roll-off with VU meters that go sideways. And that's showing just the right one because the left one is here. So you get to show all the information you'd want. Now, if you do this, now you've got large volume indicator here. So headphone off, much bigger font. Um, that's line out which I could set RCA, which is still off. So that's pre-out, which is only available to go through the thing. Oh, fuck, I'm gonna have to, all right, hold on, I'm rubbing my forehead. Hold on, please stop. This is one of those units that I could sit here and try to review it. What you need to know, all right, let's get to the parts you need to know, real quick. Timestamp CS. How does it sound? Because you're about to blow $1,300 in this thing, and it has all these features, but features end of the day are either all you care about or you don't care about all you care about is sound. This is the best sounding topping thing. All right? You got an A90D? Fantastic. This sounds better. You got an LA90D and you're using your headphones? Fine. This sounds better. It's the best sounding thing. They put all their energy into it. It sounds... It doesn't sound... I, I've, I've heard so many people recently be like, yeah, but I bet it sounds like a topping. That's their fucking like standard, like, ha ha ha. Yeah, I put down the thing. Everyone says the thing. It's a topping thing. I guess you could take this as a compliment topping. It doesn't sound like a topping. It sounds like an actual good, not that that seems that there's no bad, but it doesn't sound as deadpan as usually toppings do. And they've been getting better. Like as soon as they went from the, 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 a90 to the A90D, and then I was using the LA90 or the LA90D, which is a speaker, which had a little more power in there for a while. This at 10 watts a channel <clears throat> sort of covers that thing. All right, back to what I was doing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm trying, trying to focus here, and it's not working. So you get your, all you really care about is displays. Let's be fucking honest. We just, because we were all just staring at, at what the, the artists are doing with f poor Fern. So if we push this in, currently it's set to do change the headphone outputs. We push this in, we get to that. We go to display. Home can be normal, or VU, or FFT, which is that. And that's, by the way, left and right, I believe. Let's go to the headphone demo and... Left, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So you get individual, full from 50 to 16K, fucking whatever an FFT is. I actually don't understand what that means. But, um, okay, that's cool. Please stop saying left and right, left and right. Or you get normal which is what I showed you with AES and PCM and showing you all the inputs, or you get VU. Now, we're going back to the VU, which is blue currently, because guess what? You can change the VU style from these modern blue ones. We scroll past brightness, which is on high, and to VU style, we can go to classic. Okay, who did I just sell this to? Someone out there, I'll put this back on flock and put some Lana Del Rey on, fucked my way to the top. I didn't. I wish I did. It'd be much more fun. Um, so now you have these. And I'm split on if I hate this or not. 
Because I, like, here's the thing, those are square screens, and these views here, which we could click on, these are square, beautiful CalRAD views, and there's no reason they couldn't have done that, like, white look. They're, if you're going to give me two VU options, either the blue lines or these like old school looking like tube amp ones, give me five options. All right. It wouldn't have taken much. I don't think they're, they're just like animations. I, if there's a firmware update for this that adds more, please topping, give me like, cause that's cute but you're putting a round peg in a square hole and I can tell and I hate it kind of. I, I would. That's why I wasn't using these, I was using the blue ones. Cause it's like, no, 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 no. If you're gonna make it look like a VU, you've got a digital screen. Just make it look like a digital VU, like a nice one. Or do anything, do round circles, or do like the Knight Rider red. I want more. I'm the guy, you give me an inch and I'm like, fuck this inch, I want six and a half miles. Right now topping. I want 27 of these. I want them constantly over the air updating. I want new ones every day. I want fucking free run and fern ones where they're just opening their mouth. I want it all. That said, they are pretty nice to have and I think people are gonna buy it a lot. I think if you were on the fence and then you saw this, you're no longer on the fence. You've fallen off the fence and the dog's chewing on your balls. So let's go back to display. We'll get display out of the way. Brightness high, view style classic. We'll go back to blue. I'm preferring of the blue. Then you have the classic VU decibels for sensitivity because it's using obviously digital inputs. So if you play a lot of quiet songs, you can send it down. If you put it for a lot of songs, you go, it's either plus four or plus 10. I'm leaving it on plus four. Your level meter is normal page or FFT page or all off. So that's at the bottom of the thing to show you the level meter, or all on, I, there's a fourth one. So yeah, you can just, let's put it on FFT page. And we gotta go back, keep scrolling. Screen normal, oh, screen inverted. So that just moves your menu over. That, there's so many fucking options. Skip to the end of this video. I don't, this, I don't even know what I'm gonna talk about after this. LED high, oh, for those LEDs in there, you could have them be off, low, medium or high. You're all gonna leave on high, so it looks like a toaster oven. That's just how it's gonna work. And then you have a return function. So we're done with the display settings. You go down to input. This is something I would rather, I, I like to see change. Your input select, which there are a fucking number of, you have to cycle through them by pushing the thing. Now, luckily everything I have plugged in there, they're all getting signal out. So AES plays, USB doesn't, because there's no USB, Bluetooth, should be disabled, honestly, so I don't know why it's even showing up. Optical 1 plays music. Optical 2, coaxial 1. Optical 2, coaxial 2. II2S, AES, and then we're back around to USB. So you have to cycle through it. I'd rather if that was a menu and then I could scroll down and click go. Because if you have to get from one to the other and it's the one that was previous, you're going to be bashing the button over and over again. Yeah, optical do. All right, I want to get the speakers to play. So let's see, out mode. Here, here's, I'll list the things we have now. Out mode, headphone out, headphone amp output, line output, pre-output, gain, on-off trigger, PCM filter, DSD filter, advanced, language, factory reset, and return. <sighs> okay, so out mode is currently headphone out. Now the out mode is line out. Now the out mode is pre-out. Akiba made war, fantastic. Now the out mode is all out. So all of this and this, all of it out, another separate volume setting. So I click that, we're at negative 50 decibels. Yeah, moi moi kun. Um, so now these are playing, these are playing, everything's fucking playing. But that's not just all out, that's all out the three main banks. Now we gotta go back in and now we have line out is specifically XLR or all or, or, or off or RCA. So you can then tune which one of these is going to be out. So you got your headphone output, which you can pick between all three, each one or none. Then your pre out off RCA, which is what's going down to that amplifier or XLR, which I got I to gotta point something else out before I get further into the review. 
Although we've got to be coming close to the end of my sanity. Um, I want to display something because I'm probably going to use it in future episodes. So this has two sets of XLR outs, which you could basically just set for two balance things. I got this today from Orchard Audio. Does anybody know if this exists in another form? Because this is $300, which is quite a bit. But... Hold on, i got to make this volume down. Um, but this is a very basic device. You feed it 9 volts, you give it RCA inputs, and it literally poops out full 100% balanced voltage XLR. And he built this because his amplifiers are very, like, insensitive. So if you don't have if you use RCA adapters, like the standard ones, they really won't get loud enough. So he's just got a box that you can buy, feed any RCA output, like if you have a DAC that maybe is only RCA output, but you really want to get that full XLR voltage... Orchard Audio makes a thing. It's a plastic thing, but it's a very, very fucking useful thing. And I have it set up and it wires again go nowhere. Because God almighty, could you imagine how much equipment I'd have to have set up? Holy fuck. Um, back to the menu. So now, okay, we can now pick our input, our output mode, our headphone out mode, our line out mode, our pre output mode, our gain Low or high, when you hit high, it's a yes or no option. The output gain also affects the voltage coming out of both the pre and line out. So that, that will actually get louder now without, I'm down at negative 95. Uh, it's too loud, just shh. So you know, I don't like how you have to dig in the menu to get to high gain, but it's so powerful on low through this, which is all you'd really need it for. I don't know why it affects the back. That they're just burying it. Like, you don't really need the high game. You don't need high game. Just get out of here. You don't need high game. Um, all right. Let's finish this on off triggers. It's either off or signal or 12 volt or off. PCM filters. Um, I still can't hear a difference. DSD filters. I'm not playing DSDs. So that's fine. Advanced. So underneath this is factory reset and language. Advanced. Let's go to the advanced menu inside the menu. Channel balance, which is nice. People who have hard of hearing or are setting up something with like speakers and you have like a slight thing and you just need a channel balance, you can do that. And in fact, you could do it in half decibel increments. So after that, you have DAC mode, which is what confuses me because it's set to DAC. And if I set it to pre, now the DAC mode is pre. But the pre was already acting as a pre. And the line out was already acting as a line out, which is basically what the DAC is. So I don't know why that's there. I gotta stop shaking the table so I don't drop these on the floor. Although those Canto stands are pretty nice. Bluetooth I have disabled because I really don't want this broadcasting constantly and trying to connect to my phone. Um, remote, which is this, which is infrared. You can disable that if you want to do, which can be helpful if there's another remote in your space that like fucks with it. So it doesn't switch to line out while well, someone's trying to change the channel to go to CNN. So you could disable the remote entirely, especially if you're using this on a desk that might be beneficial to you. Your button output, which this is button. Your button output, you can change from output select to home select to brightness select to dim the screen to output mode select to filter select to mute to input select or output select. So you get all those options. You got to cycle fucking through them. Uh, USB can be one or two. II2 phase, II2 DSDR, II2 DSD flag. So the, I, the DSD just worked. So I'm not going to start fucking with these settings. Uh, II2S mute is either on or off. I guess you could mute that for whatever reason and then return. So we're done with advanced. We're going to hit return. We are done with the menus. We have now explored this unit. The, the remote's literally the basic tapping remote. The auto is actually for how it turns on and off, whether it's auto on with signal or auto on with triggers. You get your brightness select, auto, low, middle, and high, which I guess m middle is better than medium. Um, the M button is the menu, although, wait a second, isn't this the menu? They're both the menu. The M button is both the menu and that middle button is the menu. Then you get your filter select, which again, I don't care if it's short delay or super slow or long dispersion. I can never hear the difference and I've fucking listened. Um, then you get your choose. Of, so here's what freaks me out. Or it doesn't freak me out, but like headphone button, 
picks between the different headphones. Great. 6.35, 4.4, XLR, all or off. The line out chooses the line output select off, RCA, XLR, all or off. But there's no button here that does the pre out on or off. So you can switch between these three. You can switch between these two, but you can't switch between those two unless you go to the front. And then you got to go to pre, I don't know. It's, 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 it's one of those things I just wish there was like an extra button or get rid of the filter button and make that the pre out button where you could switch through it. It's a small little thing. Um, left and right switches between the inputs. Again, not a list, but I just cycle through, but at least you can go backwards on this. So I could set it to I, 2S if I wanted to. You got a standard mute, which shows up there and you got a power button, which is power button. I think we've, um, Su sufficiently gone through what this unit which is absurd for just how much stuff this is one of those cases of like a lot of shit units not like shit like h like it like a c8 like they're very simple there's there's audiophiles who just want simplicity they like like literally the mass kobo is just a power a power plug and you get two choices of inputs with some little toggles. And the front, you pick which one you want to listen to and the power, and you're done. This is for the people who are like, no, 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 fuck that. I need you know, all of that. I need some coffee. I got to have like like seven different digital inputs. And I got to have all the analog outputs. And they got to be individually controlled in the volume control. Got to control them all. And you got to have the remote. The, the, like, holy shit. This has so much going on. And... If you describe this, if, if three years ago, before I knew this was a thing, if you described what this unit can do, just as a text, if I didn't know the brand or anything, it's like, here, how about a unit that has fucking 10, 10, I want to go back to that, 10 watts at 16 ohms, 7 watts at 32, 4.2 at 64, 1 watt at 300, and 460 milliwatts at 600 ohms. If you told me that it had all of these options and settings and 132 uh, dB noise floor and you could, oh my fucking, this flagship power before all this crap, it'd be $6,000. That would be my guess. What Topping does better than anybody is take as many features as you do or do not need. It doesn't matter. Cram them into what is essentially a, be a beautiful piece of audio gear and sell it to you for like a third of the price that you should be spending on it. But just having a glass window on top of something should automatically make it a over $1,000, which this is, but fuck. I need to stop talking. I need to go get a drink. So um, yes, fucking yes. Do I recommend this? Yeah. You know where this was, by the way, for the last three months? Because you, you've only been down here for like a week or two, ever since the, the the mass Kobo was done. This was upstairs at my desk, like my real desk, my desk where I do business-like things and play video games and check my email. This was my, I'm you know not here working. I'm just going to go upstairs. I'm going to plug a headphone into this, maybe a cheap headphone, maybe my collab that's coming up. Keep an eye out for the Eris. We're still working on looks, but the Eris is almost done. And I just want to like listen to something. And then when the mass Kobo needed a DAC upstairs, I didn't have to come down here and dig out a Danafreps or get the EF600. This is, I probably should have mentioned that the DAC output is as clean as you'd ever need a DAC. Done. It didn't subtract a single iota from the mass Kobo, but then again, the mass Kobo could also run off of like a 17 year old iPod and probably still sound the best headphone amplifier on earth. But I trust this. All that matters in this whole review, you could skip all the fucking thing, go to this point. I trust this to play a headphone to its capacity. Not mass Kobo like we, mass Kobo owner, by the way, who came and picked it up says, well, it's ruined tubes for me. So that's what the mass Kobo gave you. It gave you a sound that was like beyond tube sound because it was solid state power and then also just just wildness. But I personally trust this, anything I plug into it, if I output from the DAC to something, I'm, I'm getting the best I need at this point. Output from the front to something, I'm getting the best I need at this point. It's clean 
absolute power. I was plugging anything from this, the most sensitive IEMs to, other than tungsten, the hardest to drive headphones. It's just a voltage thing with tungsten. That's like a weird bird. You don't have to worry about it. But like you have a hard to drive planar. You have an impossible to drive normal-ish. I'm pretty sure Sun uh, Susvara would be fine on this. At 10 watts, Susvara would be fine. So I don't have a Susvara here. If you'd like to donate one to the channel, I will absolutely take it from you and put it, um, I don't know, I guess maybe in this drawer. That's where I put Susvara. Um, I'm going to link to this. I hope I've answered quite a number. I've tried to try to make these questions, these videos to mitigate the questions that come afterwards. We'll see us. How about this? And how about this? And how about that? And I, I can't. There's too many scenarios where you could put this into it and have a completely fucking different experience where you're plugging this thing in or that thing in. Or, oh, yeah, Zeos, can I run um, two sets of amplifiers and then have one be for the bass bins because I'm, I'm doing bi-amping and then also have the RCA go out and act for the subwoofer? And uh, Yeah, you can. And also have that last one RCA come out come for a headphone amp on the front in case this headphone, so you have a tube headphone amp and this headphone amp and a fucking three-way speaker system all out the back of this because you can. Because you can. It's absurd. By the way, mouse pad. You guys have to click something to buy in this video. So I thought the uh, cool drifting uh, what the fuck was the Eurobeat. What's the Eurobeat anime? I know this. They just made the part twos weird and they kept showing that girl's ass you should go watch it watch free and apothecary diaries and um uh, undead unlock is fantastic and i just started mashal which is like the second season's out i didn't see the first season fucking hilarious there's so many good shows anyway check out my second channel for random videos like what anime i'm watching and um this channel thank you for stopping by uh wallpapers in the wallpaper horde link to this on apos I'm so, I'm so glad I put, like, I didn't even want to leave this on the desk, on the desk, the uh, JDS Labs. I was going to hook this up to it, and I'm just like, you know what? No. Because then I'm going to want to plug a headphone into it, and there's going to be two headphones, and it be too much. This unit is a lot. This is basically the most stuff you can get into a thing and still have it be completely kind of simple and functional. So congratulations, Topping. You're fucking my mind up a little bit right now. And I know a lot of you are just going to buy it because look at that look. Just, 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 hold on, right? Display. There, we'll go to the classic for you. Oh, wah, wah. Anyway, I'm, I'm done. Done. She's done. Look at her. She's fucking done. I'm done. You're done. Thank you for sticking around for 37 minutes. It sounds... I wouldn't talk about it with such exuberance if it didn't sound good. If it sounded like meh, I'd be like, eh, meh. But it sounds good on top of all of this other shit. So all this other stuff is fluff compared to the actual, like, hey, how does it make my cost? Which are the best scaling headphones on the earth? And let's see if I can actually get it to come on. Ah! It's also playing those, and I wouldn't have been able to tell, and Frank's 2000-inch TV would get me fucking copyright strike. Goodbye, everyone. Patreon, subscribe, star, support this channel, please, God. More than ever, do I need just patrons to just enjoy my content? They, you will find free IM reviews on there. Even if you're not paying, you can go visit Patreon and subscribe star and see all the IM reviews which I haven't released publicly yet. If you want to see these reviews early, like way early, like a month early, because I'm doing three-day releases, $5 a month that you see all of these reviews in their entirety, which you're going to need more minutes than normal to watch them for $5 a month. You get to the uh, yard sale, which is from the 1st to the 10th of every month. I sell a bunch of shit, and I think I'm not going to sell this ever. Or Apos wants it back. It's one of those too. I mean, who? Why would I sell this? It's too goddamn pretty. I'm even glad that it's amber LEDs and it's not just like RGB. That could have been just. Please don't do that. Although purple would have been kind of cool. Um, so yeah, ten dollars a month lets you. Uh, Five dollars a month you bid on those things in the yard sales that I ship internationally. Uh, you also get lost the sound demos. Previous and new sound demos are all available only to patrons now. They're no longer on the internet because lawyers. Uh, for $10 a month, you get the, the behind-the-scenes Telegram chat. So if you've never heard of the program Telegram, you should. There's tons of great stuff in it. Mostly porn. 
but there's tons of great stuff in it. And me. I'm on it and porn's on it. So yeah, check out Telegram and you get into the $10 chat where you can ask me questions directly. And if you're in that chat, you go into a lifetime swap me channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear because you're going to need to sell enough stuff to spend like $1,300 to buy this. So that's a good place to do it. Um, yeah. Are we good? I think we're good. All right. Thank you. Stopping this video now. If you'd like to add anything, if you've seen one of these play with them, know anything that I didn't say, and you made it all the way here somehow, fucking thank you. Um, let me know in the comments. I will be checking for at least a couple days after this video. Uh, now I'm going to go and smash my face into a wall and try to think about how great music is and not just all the endless goddamn connections.